Construction Coach here. Today's video, I'm going to show you a little bit of a different thing. This is me building my cabin from the ground to the top. Follow along and we're going to go through each step. Here's the footing pour. This is me and my fiance going through. She's leveling with the rake and I'm following behind with the float. Once we get complete, we will put all our hook bars into the rebar or into the footings in the center where the wall is going to start up. The house part of the foundation is 30 by 50 and there's an attached garage sec section that is 20 by 39. Now I'm down in the basement setting up my cribbing. I'm using a 3 quarter inch exterior plywood that I drilled my hole patterns on to use loop end ties and cam locks to close everything up. Right now I'm tying in my 10M rebar on a 24 inch grid in the walls. Once all the rebar is tied up, I'll give it a good clean, make sure there's no debris on the footing, form oil my forms, and stand them up. Okay, the concrete pour is all complete, forms are stripped, and here I am working on the main floor system. This is a 30 by 50 floor, really basic design, center beam, uh, some larger headers over the floor windows, and a little stairwell to create kind of where the hole is being left there. Alright, that floor is sheeted and I'm starting all the main floor walls. I decided on the build to use 2x8s so I can increase the wall thickness to add extra insulation. This was a really, really fun time. We were staying at the neighbor's house in the basement. I rented a bedroom there and I was literally walking across the street to go to work. Here I am sheeting those main floor walls. What's very interesting about it is I had to build all the walls in the correct order to be stood up by the crane. So you'll see that as I build and figure out each wall panel, I'm also making sure that they're in sequence. Ah, crane day. Of course it had to rain. Here I am with the crane operator, standing each wall, making sure it's plumb and on my chalk line. Connecting them up and bracing as I go. One funny thing when the operator showed up, he said, where's your crew? I said, nope, I'll be doing this all by myself. This was about a two and a half hour uh, crane day and I was definitely soaked when we finished. Interesting note, I reused all my 200 sheets of three-quarter plywood as exterior sheeting. That's why my exterior sheeting has a little bit of a concrete residue on the inside. 
but I, I wanted to do my own cribbing and it was the only way that it would work cost efficiently is that if I reuse those forms of sheeting then I didn't have to buy all the OSB sheeting for the walls. The inspector thought it was a really really good idea he just asked me to plug all the form holes with some uh, PL400. Alright, walls are up on the main floor and I'm building this interesting farm looking wall as my load bearing wall. This was some extra 4x8 Douglas fir and I really wanted to create the look in the cabin of an old farmhouse that was renovated and I think this look is really going to help. Uh, since, we've, since we've got finished now, those nails got a little rusted when the roof was open and we had some rain, so it's really got a nice patina. Here I am detailing the floor system to go on top of the garage. That's where my bedroom will be. Sometimes it's really fun to work by yourself because you can really build large things if you're organized and safe. So this is me putting like an 800 square foot floor together in about two hours. Really easy design, no center supports. The floor is designed to span the whole distance. I needed some shade so I'm cutting my blocking inside. Alright, second floor sheeted. Now I'm going to work a layout out for all the walls on the second floor. This upstairs has a two bedroom design. One bedroom is about 20 by 30 and the other bedroom is like 20 by 39 on that on the house side of it it does have a living room that reduces out of that space but the bedroom will have a loft that is over top of the whole living room too so a couple of really nice big areas to work with this room has five windows in it no six windows in it um, four on the back wall one in the corner there and one in the washroom and then across into my room, I think there's something like nine windows in here and a door to get out into the patio. I really like to put my layouts down with colors so that when I am creating my walls in and figuring out all my lines that everybody's on the same page. This is something I've done for years and when I'm doing basement developments, I'll do the same thing and it really helps like people visualize and me visualize what's going on. This is kind of a fun little frame. This is all the interior walls in my bedroom to create the little kitchenette, toilet room, steam shower, and walk-in closet, which is actually going to be a loft inside the bedroom on top of it there. I plan to have kind of like a yoga loft in there. I believe I have a seven foot ceiling height from the top of that deck to my scissor trusses. And then we're gonna extend that out a little further with this honeycomb Douglas fir floor. And that's actually where my bed's gonna go way up in the top. Here we go, trust delivery day. Here's me and my son building that honeycomb Douglas fir floor that I was telling you about. Again, this is another one of those farm look features. I'm gonna leave this exposed from below and so you'll always be able to see the rusted nails and the Douglas fir. I will turn the OSB um, into like a nice finished plywood so when you look underneath, you're gonna see a finished stained plywood with the old floor. This is crane day. My son and I are just finishing the last angled wall before our crane operator arrives to help us fly up through the, uh, three sections of roof. It was really complicated 
building this place by myself and with my son, uh, I had to organize with the crane operator to come for three different days and me and my son had to build sections of roof each day to be ready for the next day. So it got really, really intense. When we're done flying these three sections on, then we spent the rest of the day building the stuff that we needed to fly up tomorrow. And then when we got done, we built the stuff that we need to fly up the next day. So it was a pretty hard three days of work. I have some really good memories of this place, working with my son, flying in with the crane. It was such fun just seeing us build these large sections of roof and then the next day fly them up into place. Oh, the last section. So you can see my bed is going to be up in the top here and then I've got that little yoga loft down low another two feet. So I got about a five foot ceiling height in the, in the cuddle loft and I got about a seven foot ceiling height in the yoga loft. Here's crane day two. We did sheet that whole section in fly it up sheeting in place. That saved me a lot of time. And here's the last of our tall walls creating that 30 by 30 foot living room with 27 foot ceilings. And here's our last crane day flying in the roof sections that we framed in the driveway. This was a really fun day. I think it was the biggest change on the job site ever was standing the three tall walls and flying up these three sections and the two lifts of sheeting. I made some areas to fly up and land the sheeting safely so that I could get started right away without having to pass anything up. That's four sections of scaffolding there. And here's me up on the roof doing some sheathing. Beautiful views up there. I kind of wish my cabin was a little bit taller, but maybe the next one I can get up in the mountain somewhere. I'm all tied off, you can see. I'm a little bit of a chicken when it comes to heights. This is a 512 roof, so it really does feel shallow but over top on the other side there, it is a 712. It's probably best to always wear your harness. Here's some drone shots of when the roofing was starting. I was also part of the delivery, getting all the shingles up there. And uh, you can see it's a pretty basic design, but we've got some really large spaces in there. That's just me and my fiance playing around with the drone camera. Get you guys these awesome angles. Well, thanks for watching. This takes us up to the roof, roofing time. And uh, we've got a part two coming out that's gonna show all the finishes on the outside and some more details. So stay tuned and thanks for watching.